Come on, we lift up a sound this morning. We lift up a sound this morning. We lift up a sound. We lift up a sound. Everybody, come on.
name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. We worship you. We pause and say thank you, Lord. We pause and open our mouths. With adoration, Lord, we adore you. Yahweh Adonai, we worship you. We bless you. Jehovah Sidkenu, you are our righteousness. Jehovah Jireh, you are the Lord God, our provider. Jehovah Mekadesh, you are the Lord, our sanctifier. Jehovah Shalom, you are the Lord, our peace. Jehovah Shiloh, peace. Jehovah Nisi, you the Lord, our great banner of victory. Jehovah Sabaoth, you the Lord of hosts. You are mighty in battle. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. El Elyon, you the most high God. Hallelujah. We bless you. We bless you. Bereshith bara Elohim. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're God all by yourself. You're not in competition with anybody. You are God alone. You are God. Hallelujah. We bless you. Glory to God. Oh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. Everything I need. Come on, focus on him just for the next moment. Focus on him next, for the next few moments. Focus, 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 focus. The apostle Simon Peter would say, he would say, gird up the loins of your mind. That means focus. That means focus. That means don't look at what you're going through. Look at where you're going to. Don't look at your circumstances. Don't give your, don't give your circumstances all of your attention. At a certain point, you got to let your eyes leave your situation. He knows what you're going through, but you've got to focus on the solution now. Hallelujah. He's everything to me. He's everything. He's everything. He's everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship, worship. We wait upon you, Lord. We wait upon you, Lord. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. We wait with bated breath on God. Does he mean everything to 
and tell them, say, I would rather have Jesus. Rather have Jesus. Hallelujah. Than houses and land. Yeah. Do you really mean that? Because a lot of people, a lot of people really spending everything, they're spending their whole, every waking moment trying to get stuff. But Jesus got to be first and foremost. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I would rather have Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got, I got had to while ago and knocked all the settings off. Hallelujah. <laughs> you, you ever got happy and knocked your settings off? There we go. Just a portion of this. I want y'all to just sing this song. I want us to really get this out of this attitude of worship. There's, there's a sweet yes. presence of the Lord in this room. Right yes. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
not against but against principalities and powers rulers of the darkness of this world spiritual wickedness in high places the Bible tells us when you jump over to uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 3 through 5 he says no we walk in the flesh we don't walk according to the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they're mighty through God so the pulling down
How many of you know? How many of you know there's some things? Go ahead and take your seat. How many know there's some things ain't gonna change till you get tired of it? You know why some things keep going the way it's keep going? Because you ain't tired. Because when you get tired of some stuff, uh oh. Sometimes the best thing it is to hear is to hear somebody say, I'm tired of this. I know a lot of times we say that, but you, but, but you can't say that and just stay in the same direction. Because if you stay in the same direction, you really ain't tired yet. But when you get tired of a thing, I say, when you really get tired of a thing, after a while, that tired is going to translate to your feet. And it ain't going to just be in your mouth, it's going to translate to your feet. Hallelujah. Then there's going to be some action behind that thing. When a person really get tired of something. And sometimes we just have to get what is known as fed up. Come on, say fed up. Anybody ever been fed up? Oh, it's easy to say I'm tired. It's easy to say, man, I, I sure need to do something. I, I wish I could do something. I wish I had somebody to come and, and do something for me. But do you know there's some things you got to do for yourself? Did you know that some things ain't gonna work in your life until you do? Until you do? Come on, Amen. we have to, we have to, we have to initiate. You know, even the Bible says if we draw nigh to God, He'll draw nigh to us, right? But who's doing the first drawing? We have to initiate this thing. We have to, we have to draw nigh to Him. Hallelujah. Let me take this down just a little bit. Get that little ring out of it. Praise the Lord. Somebody say Amen. Amen. Get your Bibles and turn to the second chapter of the gospel according to St. Mark. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you for your love and your kindness and your tender mercy. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord this morning to see all of you in the house of the Lord. Oh, we got to move on. Hallelujah. I don't want to be before you long because those of you that can and will, I want you to be with us this afternoon on at Fourth Mount Olive. We want to go and just give honor to Pastor Morris Payton, the house over there. Amen. Amen. That's all right to do that, isn't it? Amen. I said it's all right to do that, isn't it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I was I was watching my dogs last night beat up on them cats. My dogs. <laughs> <laughs> dogs, dogs finally look like dogs. I didn't get nearly as bad as I usually get last night. <laughs> Because they actually play the halfway decent game. They actually play like the champions they are. Hallelujah. I mean, when you get on the field, you got to give it all you have. And that translates, over, that, that translates over to the things of God. We got to give God our all. We can't wait till the second, the second half to try to do stuff. You got to come out of the game. You got to come out, amen, with your mind on winning. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In Mark's gospel, chapter 7, here's our Lord Jesus Christ. And basically what's going on in the verses that I'm going to read to you, this is our Lord, amen, rebuking the scribes and Pharisees. Right. And I need you to understand that even the day and time we live in, the Lord is still rebuking scribes yeah. and Pharisees. Amen. Because they still need to be buked. Amen. I say they still need to be buked. Yeah, right. There are modern day scribes. There are modern day Pharisees. Don't think that Jesus was the only one who had to deal with Pharisees. You and I also have to deal with Pharisees. And even you and I ourselves, if we're not careful, we'll become inundated with the Pharisaical spirit. Talk to me. We've got to be so careful. Amen. Everything, listen to me, everything that we do and say that, and the practices and the procedures and the protocols that we carry out, if you will, these things must all be subjected to the scrutiny of God's word. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. And once a thing, once a thing has been determined to be non-scriptural, I don't care if it came out of headquarters. Amen. I don't care who legislated it. Hallelujah. Right. I don't care who voted it in. Right. I don't care what college of bishops said we're going to do it this way. If it's not according to the word, throw it out. Amen. Say amen if you know I'm right. Amen. Well, this is what we're, this is what we're in the middle of. Hallelujah. We, we, yeah, we, we started this. We introduced this thought to you last time. Hallelujah. And this morning, it is my intention, by the help of the Lord, as I read these passages to you, it is my intention to continue my toxicology exam. Yeah. <laughs> Say toxicology. 
Tufts College, you understand that that branch of science and that branch of medicine, that branch, that branch of diagnosis that deals with the nature, effect, and detection of poisons, yes. toxicants, toxins, deal is this that scientific discipline, Webster says, overlapping with biology, chemistry, and pharmacology, and medicine that involves the study of the adverse effects of chemical substances on living organisms. Sometimes people act the way they act because they're under certain influences. It may not be something you took. It may not have been something you smoked up, or something you put on a needle and shot up. Talk to me. It may not be something that you put on a pipe and smoke, but nevertheless, a toxicant is a toxin. An intoxicant is an intoxicant. And sometimes, just who you got in your circle. Sometimes you just let them, you know, back, I don't know how it is now, but back in the day when I was in the world, you know, we used to, we used to you know, pass the joint, man. Mm -hmm. Give me a shotgun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I've been over there. I've been there. Yeah. They, take that, they take that joint, put it in reverse, put it in mouth, and they get in your face. <laughs> and, as they, and as they blow, you suck. <laughs> And some of y'all still sucking my folk blowing. Y'all don't hear me yet. Hallelujah. You still letting the wrong folks blow in your face. <laughs> they may not be blowing marijuana, but they're blowing, they're blowing propaganda. Hallelujah. They're blowing religiosity. Hallelujah. And it's amazing the stuff that people are sucking up in churches. And they're just as high as they was when they was in the street. Lord, have mercy. I said, uh, I said an intoxicant is an intoxicant. Hallelujah. And it's, it's my intention again. We are, we are conducting this morning a spiritual toxicology exam. Yes. Hallelujah. Because I detect the presence of poisons. Yes. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. But, but the good part about it, glory to God, some poisons, if you catch them early enough, That's right. you can put other things in the system, hallelujah, and it's called a what? It's called an antidote, and it will counteract yeah. The effects of that toxin. Yes, so this morning, hallelujah, even though there's some things that's been around for a long time, and it has poisoned the church, in essence, it is killing the influence of the church. We got folks in the street picking at us. That's right. Folks in the world saying, that's what church is, I won't go part of it. I can stay in the streets and raise hell. Right. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Why do I want to go to hell from the church? Mm -hmm. Why do I want to go to church and act like and pretend mm -hmm. when I can just stay in the streets and just be me? Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. You're in the right house this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at verse 1 of the seventh chapter of Mark. Hallelujah. Then came together unto him Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with the fowl, that is to say unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands often, eat not, hallelujah, holding the what? Tradition. Hallelujah. Holding the tradition of the elders. They, if, they don't, if they don't follow the tradition, they ain't going to even eat. They'd rather starve to death than to break tradition. There's some folks, rather you stay bound. Than to break religious tradition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's some folks, hallelujah, listen to me. Cause I'm, I'm telling you, you got all these, these, these denominational leadings yeah. and all these headquarter persuasions, hallelujah. And I, and I often say it jokingly, but I mean it I, even though it come out in jest, but it's also true. You can't get a Church of God dog to drink water out of a Baptist pan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because it didn't come from my headquarters. Mm -hmm. Seems like the dog just ain't got thirsty enough. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And, and, and verse 4 says, and when they came, and when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And many other things. That, that's the point. I, 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 if, if I didn't tell you last time, you need to underline that. And many other things. Many other things. Hallelujah. But I can't buy, I, I don't write in my Bible, but go buy you one you can write in. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And many other things which they have received to hold. As of the washing of cups, pots, brazen vessels, and of tables. There's a lot of other stuff. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not your disciples according to the traditions of the elders? Why y'all folks at New Beginnings don't do like any other church do? All right, now. That ain't how we were taught. All right. 
We've been, we've been taught this, we've been taught this way for 50 years. And I often say, has it ever occurred to you that you might have been wrong for 50 years? Please understand, longevity of a thing doesn't guarantee accuracy. Just because something been around a long time doesn't mean it was always right. Amen. Talk to me, somebody. Don't, don't get tight on me. Hallelujah. Amen. You get quiet, I'm going to hold you longer. Hallelujah. You better talk that. <laughs> you better say something. I'm, I'm, if you don't say something, I'm, I'm going to assume you ain't heard me yet, and I'm going to keep repeating it till you get it. Somebody say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So just because a thing been around a long time, just because we're, 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 we've been doing it this way for years, that don't mean you were right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I was in the church. We, we held that, that things were taught for years. You know, and, and then I was told something like, who are you to think you just come along and all of a sudden you know more than the bishops know? I'm telling you, I, 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 was, I, I was told that. I was, I was stood up straight with them to do. Hallelujah. You got bishops, hallelujah, who are more than twice your age. And all of a sudden, hey, you just got saved last week, if you will. And now you, all of a sudden you know more than they know. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that I know more than they know, hallelujah, but I do know this, hallelujah, that you can get used to seeing a thing for so long. You can get used to a thing. You can get used to the dark. As a matter of fact, you can get so used to the dark until the light hurts your eyes. Amen. <laughs> you, ever walk out, you ever walk out of the theater in the middle of the day when you first get out, what you have to do? You come out there looking like you smell something. <laughs> I don't smell. I'm just trying to get my eyes time to readjust because I've been in that dark theater for a couple hours and some folks have been in the dark theater of religion, hallelujah, that when they walk in the light of the truth, it hurts their eyes, it hurts their eyes. Amen. and they're in church looking like this <laughs> they don't smell nothing they, 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 the truth hurts sometimes yeah. because the truth of having the respect for your opinion That's right. you know the truth doesn't really care how you feel about it That's right. the, truth, listen to me, the truth does not stop being truth because you don't like it Amen. the truth does not, does not cease to be truth because nobody was speaking That's right. a, a lie is a lie if everybody believes it I mean, a lie does not magically become the truth because it's accepted by the masses. Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler said, he said, he said, if you're going to tell a lie, tell a bigger. That's what Hitler, and he did it. Hitler said, if you're going to lie, if you're going to tell a lie, tell a big one. He says, and tell it often. And he did. He led at what was called the Third Reich. You ever, you ever read some of that? Yeah. Some of the history? Yeah. Hallelujah. Adolf Hitler, he led that thing. He had the, almost the whole world through their lot in with Hitler. Mm -hmm. following, following that man all the way to hell. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. You can be, you, you, when they, when they're sincere, you can be sincere, but be sincerely wrong. wrong. Mm -hmm. Sincerity doesn't mean you're right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Some of the most, listen to me, babies. Some of the most sincere people I've ever seen in my life are church folks. They're sincere. Some of these people that are in these cults. Hallelujah. I don't know if you get quiet, I'm going to stay at the Lord. Hallelujah. Some of these people in these cults, they're sincere. They're very sincere. They're very zealous. Hallelujah. And if you ain't careful, they'll twist you up like they'll twist you until yes, right. some of these some of these midnight wonders from the Jehovah's Witness people, they'll come to your house. I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. They'll come to your house. Yeah. Hallelujah. And if you don't know the scripture, they'll twist you into a doctrinal pretzel. Because yeah. yeah. them folks can quote scripture. Yes, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of these wonders from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Yeah. Oh, Lord. I probably shouldn't have said the name, but there it is. I'm out there now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Y'all gonna leave me out there by myself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm out here now. Hallelujah. But but sometimes you just got to, you just got to call the thing what it is. Yes, right. Because watch this. Even watch this, even your pastor, if I don't steal my P's and Q's, I'm not above error. Amen. There's some stuff that I used to teach. I had to stop teaching because I found out I was wrong. Right. And Minister and Solomon, when I found out I was wrong, I refused to be the perpetrator of error. Amen. Not going to do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I thought about, I, and I, re, I respect him. A lot of folks were picking at him, talking about him bad, but I respect the man. I'm talking about Creflo Dog. Amen. Creflo came to the understanding of some yeah. stuff he talked that was wrong, yeah. and he stood up publicly and said, y'all forgive me. Yeah. He said, all them books and tapes, he said, yes, burn them. Yeah. He did. Yes, yeah. he did. Do you know how much courage that took to do that? Yeah. He said, I was an error. Yeah. I respect people who can admit when they're wrong. Amen. Some folks are wrong and won't admit it. Hallelujah. Amen. But I respect the man Amen. when he can admit when he was wrong. Yes. Thank God for that. Yes. Because again, none of us are above error. Then these people, they, then these people call themselves rebuking Jesus and talking about his disciples. And, and why are you letting them do stuff that's against our tradition? You know, that, that, that goes contrary, amen, to the Jewish customs. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something, family, in case you haven't already figured it out. Your pastor is extremely anti-custom. All right. Mm -mm. <laughs> it is not my intention to follow anybody's tradition. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not interested in what your headquarters teach. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm here's, what, here's my interest right here. Amen. I said, here's my interest right here. Hallelujah. When I come before you, I'm going to have a Bible in one hand and a microphone in the other hand. Amen. Because that's the only thing going to stand. That's it. Word. So to have your thing going down. Jesus said, Jesus was so adamant about it. He said, hallelujah, before one jot or two of this pass, he said, heaven and earth will pass away. Yeah. God's word is going to stand. Amen. The prophet Isaiah says, The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord yes. endures forever. Again, you've heard me say, if you and I are going to endure, we've got to be in the word. Yes. Thank God for the jump and shout, but we've got to know why we're jumping. Why we jump? We've got to know why we're shouting. Let's finish reading. Read. Hallelujah. Verse 6. He answered and said, and this is Jesus. Jesus answered him and he asked him, Why come your disciples are not walking according to the traditions of the elders? For here they are eating, eating food with dirty hands. And Jesus said, How well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites? Y'all think I'm rough. You should have sat under Jesus. I ain't nothing, man. He told who? At least I ain't called nobody no snake yet. <laughs> Jesus called them a generation of vipers, a bunch of snakes. Hallelujah. I ain't got that bad yet. Hallelujah. <laughs> he called them a generation of vipers and snakes. Hallelujah. He took he called these folks a bunch of hypocrites. You know what a hypocrite is? A hypocrite is a pretender. A hypocrite is a person who act like they one thing, yeah. but in reality they something else. Hallelujah. Yeah. This word hypocrite, hallelujah, Hippocrates in the Greek, it, it, it means an actor on the stage. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. I thought about you. Anybody ever watch the Bible movies in the movies like Ten Commandments or some of those yeah. things? You watch Charlton Heston and man, he looked like a man of God. He, Played the part of Moses, he stepped into the role, and oh, he looked the part. He walked, he had that sway when he walked, and yeah. he had that voice. Yeah. Hallelujah, that's been with God. Yeah. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Yeah. He had he, he was in full character, hallelujah. Just like some church folks. Yeah. They come to church and they in character. Hallelujah. Yeah. They put on, they get up in the morning and paint on that precious Jesus face. Yeah. Come on, they come to church and hallelujah. <laughs> and that like they've been holy all day long. Hallelujah. They had, I mean, they all into the thing. Hallelujah. But I dare to follow them home. Because I read some reports and somebody said Charlton was good, but you should have saw how he act behind the scene. Mm -hmm. <laughs> somebody said behind, behind the scene. Now behind the scene is who you really are. That's it. That's so. That's but it's it. amazing how people can project when they get on the scene. Amen. And have you think, ooh, they this and oh, that's something else. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, let me talk to your children. Amen. Without you around. I can find out who you are. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some children get to church, they don't even recognize mama. <laughs> I'm all in the spirit. Mama just cussed us out last night. <laughs> <laughs> ain't no, ain't no bad word. <laughs> On the way to the church. I can talk everybody here like that, so I can talk. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Talk to them, we'll break it. Hallelujah. He says. Isaiah prophesied well of you hypocrites. He says, hallelujah, these people honor me with their lips. Say lip service. Lip service. Lip service ain't enough. 
This thing got to be who you are. Amen. Come on, say praise. praise. It's, not it's not just something, just something I, do. I do. Come on, say praise. praise. It's who I am. Who I, am. <laughs> I don't wait till I come to church and lift my hands and hallelujah. All throughout the week, hallelujah. All while I'm driving my car, while I'm on my job, Lord, I thank you, hallelujah. I don't wait till I get here to worship. Come on here, brother, hallelujah. You got to worship God and praise God, hallelujah. If you're on a bed, even if you got to slip in the bathroom for 10 days, get in there and get you a little secret shot in it, and then come on back out there. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You're Walmart sneak in the back room back there. They take you back there going over the stock. Hallelujah. I'm taking stock, all right? <laughs> We got to go on through this. He says, but how, look at verse 7. How be it what? It Say vain. vain. Say vain. 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 Means vain. Empty. empty. Just empty. There's a, lot, there's a whole lot of noise. He says, how be it vain do they worship him? Teaching for the doctrines. Teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men as of the washing of pots, cups, and any other such, and many other, that's that repetition of that phrase again, and many other such like things you do. And he said to them, full well, you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your own tradition. That's a deliberate rejection. For Moses said, then they, then, they, then they talked about, Moses said, honor your father and mother. These people had a tradition in place, hallelujah, that you could even stop honoring your father and mother under certain conditions. <coughs> listen to me, young, if I got anybody here, listen to me. There's never, it's never right to dishonor your parents. Right. Let me get some bad grammar. I don't care how old you is. <laughs> uh, for those of you that hurt your ears, I don't care how old you are. It's never right to dishonor That's right. your mother and father. That's right. Even if you don't agree with them. Even if you, don't agree with them. you ain't got to divorce your disagreement. That's right. And if you have to divorce it, divorce it in a way that does not breed disrespect. Because right. I don't care if mama wrong, she's still mama. That's right. That's right. Okay. Amen. I don't care if mama get a little off. That's right. I remember one time me and my mama was having a moment of intense fellowship. <laughs> and I voiced my disagreement and she said well I, I reckon I'm lying eh? I was stuck, I didn't know what to say <laughs> cause I wouldn't back to tell that woman she was lying cause if I had told her she was lying, I wouldn't be here telling you about it now I wouldn't have lived to tell y'all about it <laughs> so finally I said no, no mom you ain't lying you're just mistaken <laughs> oh, mama, you ain't lying. You just, you just mistaken in that point. Yeah, Some of these, I was in a store. A couple of y'all seen it. I was in a store one time, and, and little Jimmy, I don't know if I'm just giving him a name. Little Jimmy was looking at his mama and telling her mouth, boy, oh, he was, oh Lord. And I said, Lord, let me get out of this aisle. Because <laughs> everything in me wanted to snatch Jimmy up. So let me move. How, let me get on because I've been on with the jail for child abuse. Hallelujah. And mama's sta mama standing there trying to bargain with a child. Well, when we get home, oh, we'll ask your father and we'll see what he says about it. I don't want to wait that get home. I want it now. <laughs> I heard me, you might have heard me say this before. I fell out with mama one time. Oh, and that old pick and save. We ain't called. We ain't called. I trucked in. I went over there. I tried. One time. Right. Bro, Stephen, she told me I couldn't have that truck. And I <laughs> fell on the floor and started kicking. <laughs> you know what that woman did? She fell out. Right, she got on the floor right with her. God, me. But she got on the floor with me. Yeah. And when that woman got through with me, I ain't think about a truck or none of them. They can have Tonka. You know, Tonka truck was real popular. Yeah. And, 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 and I was real spoiled as a child. I was. Yeah. So Sarah shaking her head. I'm shaking too hard. <laughs> I was spoiled because I was the baby. I was, I was Pauline's baby boy. <laughs> She loved herself some me. Hallelujah. But I was rotten. I was 
smell me before you see me. I was spoiled, absolutely spoiled rotten. But that day she unspoiled me. I didn't think I thought if I pitched the fit, she would cave in and get it for me. Lord have mercy. The woman went into another, she went into another mind. Man, she went straight up crazy. But I mean, she went crazy. I'm gonna give you something fall out. Man, she come down on that floor, buddy. You talking about a fella getting up off the floor? Shut up, shut up. Jesus was cutting these, these Pharisees. He said, you bunch of hypocrites. You got a lot of tradition, hallelujah. Ain't no word of God nowhere in it. God never told you that. This is your tradition. This is stuff that you added to the word. And how many know when you add stuff to the word, you take away from the effects of the word. When you add something to the word, you make it toxic. Toxic. Add to the word. Mm. Preach it like it's written. Yeah. Don't add nothing to it. Right. Don't add to it. Don't subtract from it. Just say what it says. Yes. And whichever way to mock flop, let it flop. Right. 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 Amen. 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 So now you got to make a decision. Because some folks don't want to be right. They want to be popular. They want to be liked. They want to be accepted. Everybody wants to be liked. Come on, including your pastor. I want folk to like me, but not at the expense of truth. I want, I, I, I want to be accepted, but not at the expense of being right. That's right. Hallelujah. So that means that if I have to be by myself, me and that queen over young, we'll be by ourselves. Because we got to be right. All right, hallelujah. Let, let's move on. Go down to verse 13. I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump into some thoughts here. What does 13 say? Word of, God. of what? No you make the word of God no effect through, through your, your tradition. So, hallelujah, for the next few moments, hallelujah, we're going, just going to drive a little bit, then we're going to stop. Hallelujah. For the next few moments, hallelujah, for the benefit of our Facebook audience, our background text is Mark chapter 7, verses 1 through 16. Our topic this morning is exposing some toxic traditions that are poisoning the church. It's killing the church. Killing the church's influence. Hallelujah. We told you what toxic meant. We told you the we told you that sometimes the, we, we, we explained to you or we tried to explain to you uh, the necessity of a toxicology report. Hallelujah. Because there's certain sometimes certain behaviors amen can be traced back to certain substances. Yeah. There are certain things that whenever they're in a person's system, it causes them to act or react a certain way. Yeah. Hallelujah. You got people who are acting out of character. Most and more than likely, they are up under the influence of a toxic, of, a, of an intoxicant. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We had an uncle named Nathaniel. My uncle Nathaniel, whenever he was not under the influence, he was the quietest. He was so quiet and genteel and humble and always had his head stuck in a book. Yeah. He was very calm natured, very sweet and kind. Oh, but when he get that foul water in him. Yes, <laughs> I said when he get that foul water, this is what I'm talking about. He get that stuff in him and all of a sudden his whole attitude just shifts. He get mean as a junkyard dog and want to whoop everybody. Hallelujah. Came in the house when they had mama all upset. Hallelujah. I come in there as a 15-year-old boy. I grabbed him in the seat of his pants and threw him out the house. Had to throw my own uncle out. Got him in the backyard and straddled him and finna fin put a whooping on him. He said, I give, I give, nephew, you got me. I said, you dog all right, I got you. Got mama all upset. Hallelujah. Mama in there. Mama, mama read. I said, no, oh, mama, you got to fight. I got it. Right. Right. And I grabbed, I did, but I grabbed, I grabbed him with the air with <laughs> Went in the backyard and threw him, hit him, hit so hit the ground so hard he grunted. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want my, oh, my mama to struggle with him. I got him. I was a big boy. Here. Oh, boy. <laughs> But I, I, I was a big young fellow then. I can tussle with you here. I can't, I'm, I'm too old to fight. I'm too fat to run. Hallelujah. But back in them days, this would be now you're about to get shot, I'm telling you. I'm too old to fight and I'm too fat to run. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. That's what you mean, my queen. Now you're allowed to get up, you're allowed to catch up. Hallelujah. But back then, I'd go to the carpet with you. 
Oh, hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. So we're talking about toxins. We're talking about poisons. Hallelujah. And one of the main, this is going to be a little rough, but I got to talk about it. One of the main toxins that's in the modern church is this clerical abuse. All right, man. We got preachers, we got clergy that's abusing their positions. Amen. I got to talk about it. Now, I believe in giving honor to whom honor is due. But some of these people take honor too far. They take honor into a realm that Jesus never intended for it to be. Let's go to 1 Peter. Come on, we're going to knock some dust off some Bibles this morning. Let's go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Clerical abuse. One of the most toxic traits that is observed today, hallelujah, is apostles, so-called prophets. Evangelists, pastors, and teachers, amen, elders and bishops, hallelujah, who are abusing their power and their exercise and in order to control over the people. You ain't got to say amen, but you see it. These preachers, men of them, hallelujah, they got these controlling spirits. Some of these people got such a spirit of control, hallelujah. That they make their members bring copies of their W-2s to church. Amen. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying, but I'm telling you, God have the truth. Amen. They bring, you got to, if you're going to join this church, I got to see your W-2. Right. <laughs> and you got members of the church, they can't even go on vacation till they check with the pastor. Yes. Y'all don't want to help me now, hallelujah. But I'm, I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's in the church. I don't blame the work. I don't blame the street. I wouldn't come eat. There's a lot of man worship taking place in the church. Let me tell you the new beginning. You ain't ever got to worry about that. I ain't trying to get in your in your business that deep. I don't want to know what you make. I ain't trying to follow you around. Hallelujah. My hand full at 622 Thomas Street. I ain't got time to go to your house. And see how you cooking your chicken. Okay, <laughs> hallelujah. I, I, I just ain't going to do it. Amen. Now, if you got something you want to talk to me about, I'm all ears. Amen. And I will counsel you and pray with you. Hallelujah. But you ain't got to open your books to me. That's right. If anybody in this church, listen to me. I want y'all to understand it publicly. Any board member, anybody. If anybody require you to open your books to them, okay. let me know about it. Because okay. they won't be in position long. Mm -mm. Come on, somebody. Come on. <laughs> Watch this. First Peter chapter 5. You there? I need a reader. First Peter 5. Verse 1. Come on, somebody. Let's go. Hold on. Read it again, Minister Robin. Now, who is Peter talking to? The elders. We say leadership. Because an elder is a leader in the church. Yeah. There's some churches called, their ordained pastor, he called an elder. Right. Some of them call him bishop. Somebody think a bishop is just a higher elder. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Some people think, well, you know, some people say reverend. Oh, <laughs> Not reverend, reverend. But you know, the Bible says, you know, the Bible says, don't even call a man reverend. The Bible says Reverend is his name. Yeah. I don't know whether they're ready for this for this level. Teach it. Teach it. Teach it. Don't call a man Reverend. There's only one we're supposed to revere, and that's God. The Bible says holy and reverend is his name, not yours. I know we stop having this. I don't. I don't. I don't mean no harm. I know we respect and show an honor, but sometimes you have to be careful how you open your mouth about certain things. Right. But Peter said, "I'm talking to the elders. Read, honey." I who am a fellow elder. Peter said, "I'm a, I'm a leader too. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm I'm an elder as well. Read, baby." And a, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Are right, we all in this thing together? Read, baby. Watch this part. Read, baby. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you. Shepherd them. Read. Serving as overseers, uh -huh. not by compulsion. Not by compulsion. Read. But willingly. Willingly. Not, not for dishonest. Uh-huh. 
but eagerly. Eagerly. Nor as being lords over those. Look at what he's saying. Don't try to exercise lordship because when it comes down to it at the end of the day, these are not your people. These people belong to God. You're God's people. And I have the privilege of having oversight over you. Because I got to realize that I'm, hallelujah, I'm also an under shepherd, but I'm also a sheep as well. This is why the Apostle Paul would say, follow me as I follow Christ. Because the only way I can lead you somewhere is I got to be going in the same direction. I mean, about you can't leave where you ain't going. If you're not going yourself, how can you lead me there? So then some of these left foot shysters, excuse me, they say stuff like, well, do as I say to you, not as I do. The devil is alive. How are you going to tell me to cake good if you scared to eat? Right. The Bible says that the farmer, the husbandman, which is, which is a farmer, he must be the first part take of his fruit. Yeah. If you grew the cabbage, you ought to eat it too. Yeah. Come on. You ought to be the first one to taste it. Amen. Don't you know if I labor in the field growing peas and greens and hallelujah and corn, hallelujah. Yeah. I get out there and break me a mess of corn. I'm just going to be and queen going to eat some corn first. I ain't going to invite you to come get you a mess until I ate my mess. Mess of green. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. Eat my mess. Come on. Hallelujah. This is the glory to God. In other words, we have to partake first. Hallelujah. That's why David said, that's why David said, magnify the Lord and let us exalt his name. He says, I'm going to do it too. I ain't gonna just tell y'all, y'all praise God while I sit here and look at you. No, I didn't. I didn't. I'm gonna be the biggest mouth in the bunch. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say glory to, glory to God. He says, not as lords. Hallelujah. Not as lords. You're not lords now, elders. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Yes. Taking the oversight, not by constraint. Hallelujah. What I do, this is a privilege to me. Yes. That's yes. it. I said, this is a privilege yes, we know. to me. This is a, you know what this is? This is, Queen, this is a sacred trust. Yes, it is. Yeah. That people, watch this, people trust us enough. They trust me enough to let me speak into their life. That ain't no light thing. That's heavy. Yeah. And I don't take it lightly. That's right. Yeah. And I'll never abuse it. Because I understand how important that is. Yeah. That, you surrender, that, that you trust the person enough. To let them advise you. And, then it's, and what's going to happen is, you're going to go home and you're going you, you to structure your life based on the preaching. That, that, that's a heavy thing. Yeah. But some of these preachers, I'm telling you, they're taking inordinate control. They, they, they're trying to take an overshadowing influence over their people and try to make them think they're going to hell if you don't do what I say. That's demonic. Let me help you. That's witchcraft. A lot of witches in pulpits this morning. I said, there are many witches. Come on, don't think a witch got on a pointed hat and riding a broom. Hallelujah. You got witches with Bibles in their hands. They got microphones in their hands. They're wearing three-piece suits. Some of them wearing dresses. Hallelujah. Some of them got on some pretty robes. Hallelujah. And they casting spells this morning. Sister Sherry, right now, more spells are being cast from behind the pulpit right now than anywhere else in the world. God help us. This is what he's saying. Stop, don't, don't try to lord it over. Look, look at verse 3. Verse 3, that, that first Peter 4, first Peter 5, 3. Neither as being lords over whose heritage? Whose heritage? Your God's heritage. I don't come in like I'm your Lord. When I say joke, you're supposed to just say how high. When I say run, you're supposed to say how fast. No. I said no. That's not how this thing works. That's right. Watch this. It works. Watch this. A leader shouldn't be a boss. A boss comes in and says, you do, do, do. But a leader comes in and says, let us do it. Let us do it. Leader, that's the difference between the boss trying to tell you what to do. That's the leader said, Come on, we're going to do it. And the leader going to put the broom in his hand first. Because right. I'm not going to require you to do anything that I ain't willing to do. Amen. 
Come on, talk to me, somebody. Amen. He said, neither, be, neither, neither is being large, but be what? Examples. Not a lot, but an example. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is, this is the instruction Paul and uh, Peter's giving to, to these elders. Hallelujah. The quickest way to get people to do what they're supposed to do is to let them see you doing it. That's right. Amen. The most effective leader, listen to me, the most effective leadership, Sister Donna, is when we lead by example. Yes. Not just by you pointing and saying, you do, do, do. You get in show them. Mm -hmm. Teachers, you teach them, get in show them kids. Here's, here's what we're going to do. Am I telling the truth? Amen. Amen. There's a lot of clerical abuse, and y'all, it's toxic, yes. and it's killing the church. Yes, it is. You got, I said it's killing the church. It's, it's killing the influence of the church. You got pastors who are trying to micromanage their people. Hallelujah. I'm telling you what I know. I know of some churches. I know of some churches. Could call some names and you would know them. But I'm not quite that brazen. <laughs> I ain't quite that bold yet. Now, if the Holy Ghost lean on me, I'll do it. God knows I will. I don't mean no harm, but sometimes... Sometimes the only way to say a thing is to say a thing. Amen. I don't say it with malice. Mm -hmm. I say it for clarity. Amen. So people can understand. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm driving on the road and the bridge is out, I would be a man of no compassion if I didn't try to warn the other drivers. Amen. Hey, don't come this way. Because this bridge is out. Amen. What kind of man would I be to let you go on down and wreck your car? And hazard your life and possibly kill yourself. Mm -hmm. If I don't at least try. That's right. Now if I tell you you keep driving anyway, that's on you. Because some folks going to keep driving Amen. anyway. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Well that's my church. And that's my pastor. And I'm going to do whatever she said. Or he said. See how quiet it just got. <laughs> Come on now. Amen. Micromanaging people. Why? To try to control them. Yes. And there are two tactics, two things that drives the spirit of religion. The first one is guilt, and the second one is fear. Yeah. If messages are guilt-based, it's not of God. Talk to me. Come on. Don't get quiet on me yet. Yeah. I said if your message is guilt-based, yeah. you ain't preaching the gospel. Yeah. And even if it's fear-based, fear of man, now, it's supposed to be fear of God. Yeah. But fear of man, fear of the system, that if you don't do this, you know, then God's going to get you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, you try to, God ain't stunned folk, not in that way. Mm -hmm. God done already got you. <laughs> all right, all right. Hear me about the Holy Ghost family. Right. Yeah. This devilish, this practice, this practice of inordinate clerical abuse is devilish. Mm -hmm. I'm not biting my tongue this morning. I can talk because I am a pastor. Amen. And I've seen clerical abuse. I haven't just seen it. I've been a victim of clerical abuse. Yes. I wouldn't be able to tell you if I had to experience it for myself. I've been confined to the pit of hell because I didn't do what Bishop said. Right. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, anybody who's telling you wrong, I don't care who he is or who they are. Hallelujah. Wrong is just wrong. I don't care who mouth it come out of. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. It's devilish. And it is the practice of witchcraft. And it must be exposed by the antidote. See, this is the antidote for that right here. Amen. This, this verse we just read is yes. the antidote for overbearing pastors and leaders. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stop trying to lord God's people and be examples. Amen. Let folks know. Let folks see the love you have for them. Let folks see the care, hallelujah, and see the heart of compassion you have for them, and then they'll willingly submit to you. Amen. That's right. You got husbands trying to. My wife won't submit to me. Well, are you loving all right? Help me, church. Amen. Because if you got a woman, a good woman. A good woman will submit to a man that she knows loves her and has her best interest at heart. Amen. I wanted this microphone still working. Hallelujah. Oh, God. I said a good woman will submit to a loving husband. Because I still believe, regardless of what this newfangled stuff is, I still believe a man ought to be the head of his house. Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. But the woman said, that's all right. You be the head. As long as you understand, I'm the dick. 
trying to control anybody but I am watching for your soul and if I see you about to make a bad error I'm coming to you got to I got to say brother sister look at him I ain't no way in the world I wouldn't come if I would come if I didn't love you hallelujah and I'm coming with my Bible in my hand and I'm gonna tell you what you're doing is wrong hallelujah listen to me come on don't take my word for it here's the scripture right here Here's the scripture. Hallelujah. And I ain't going to broadcast your business anywhere. I'm coming to you. Because yeah. nobody else need to know. It's me. It's your pastor talking to you. Your pastor coming in love. The Bible says if anyone overtaken in an error, hallelujah, hallelujah, ye that are spiritual. We're going to get to that in Galatians eventually this year, sometime, maybe next year. He said, ye that are spiritual, restore him considering your own self. In other words, how do you want them to come to you? If the, if, if the tables were turned, how do I want people to come to me? And once you answer that question, then that's how you go to them. Because I don't know about you, but I want to be told when I'm wrong. Hey, y'all, please don't let me stay in error. If you see I'm in error, please come and say, Pastor, you know I love you. But you ain't do that right. Hallelujah. Because if a pastor can't receive correction, he shouldn't be authorized to get it. Amen. You know, some pastors think you can't correct them. Right. No, no, no. My members can't correct me. Brother, you, I can't go to your church then. <laughs> it's getting hot in here, and it ain't from the weather. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This poison. Hallelujah. Let's get another one. Hallelujah. I'm going to get one more, then we're going to close. I got, I got nine of these. Mm. We'll get one more, then we're going to close. I, I, we're going to give us enough to chew on for today. Mm. Hallelujah. The number two toxic condition, the toxic condition in the tradition in the church, is when people see the building as the church. Yeah. That's toxic. Yeah. Because when you see the building as the church, then you'll start using people to build the church instead of using the church to build people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. A lot of folks just want to use people to build their church. Instead of using the church to build the people. Because the reality of it is, you the church. I said it over and over. God don't live in boards and bricks. He don't live in this. God don't live in this stuff. And if you go back and study the book of Acts real closely, whatever they stoned Stephen, that's why they killed him. Because Stephen pointed at that temple and said, God don't live in there. And they got cussing, fussing mad. They begin to, they got so mad that they begin to bite on him with their teeth. You want to get folks mad and get them fussing and cussing? Start talking about their system. Now, how many know God didn't cause COVID? But how many of you also know God allowed COVID? He did. As devastating as it was, it still is. God allowed COVID. Because when COVID came, a lot of churches were shut down. You know why, you know why, you know why God let the churches get shut down? So that he could make an adjustment in the thinking of his people. Some of us still, some of us still didn't get it. Some of us did. Oh, Lord, you know COVID... We can't even go to church. Stupid. Send a rabbit tricks for kids. <laughs> we can't even go to church. You're the church. Yeah. I like what Sister Kipton said in her exhortation this morning. She said, you ain't got to wait on the altar call. That's right. Oh, have mercy. That's right. Did y'all hear what that girl was saying? Yeah. She said, you ain't got to wait for the altar call. Hallelujah. There's a call going forth now. You ain't got to wait on nobody to call your name. Amen. Hallelujah. God may not give me a word. I may not see. Hallelujah. I don't see everything. I see what he shows me. But I don't see everything. But you ain't got to wait till I call your condition. You're in the house. 
Your breakthrough is in your praise. Yeah. That's what the girl was telling that, 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 That's it right there. So now what happens to Sarah? God shut the churches down. Yeah. Yeah. I'm about to say a strong statement now. Some of, them should, should, some of them should have been shut down. Yeah. Some of them should have opened back up. Oh, I know that's tough. But God shuts, he shut builders down. Yeah. COVID enough, COVID enough, can't nothing shut the church down. You may close this building. Just like in the 1960s, they took prayer out of school. You can't take prayer from me. You can't stop my mind from thinking. Hallelujah. God hears my thoughts. Because when I pray, I ain't talking to you no how. When you hear the word church, you immediately think of a building. Uh -oh. That's a toxic tradition. Yes, it is. The church has never been, neither is it now, a building. Come on, man. Brother Tyrone read a scripture this morning that you hear read at a lot of funerals. Yeah. Let not your heart be troubled. Come on. Mm -hmm. You believe in God, <laughs> believe also in me. Yes, sir. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. Not mansions, mansions. <laughs> If it were not so, I would have told you. Behold, I go and prepare a place. So what this does in the mind of people without understanding, they got a mind that Jesus is somewhere about 20, 10 miles south of the planet Mars for a carpenter's tool belt on. And he got a hammer in his hand, some nails, and he's building you a mansion. That's what some people think. They think he's over yonder somewhere. But I want you to back up and, and, and say context. context. Say setting. setting. I mean, you know, context and setting is important when you're reading anything. Amen. That's right. Whenever you read the Bible, you got to consider the context okay. and the setting. You got to consider the conditions yeah. that was prevalent at yeah. that time. Yeah. So you can get an understanding of what he's talking about. Amen. When Jesus was talking about I'm going to prepare a place, he wasn't getting ready to go to heaven. Okay. He's getting ready to go to a cross. So he was saying, whatever this, place, watch this, whatever this place was he was preparing, that place is linked to my death. That's right. Woo. Yeah. Then he said, if I go prepare a place, I'm going to come again. That ain't way out of town, way over yonder somewhere. That's three days later. Yeah. Three days later. Come on. Come on, say, I'm the place. I'm the place. Say, I'm the prepared place. place. When you're talking about a place, the word mansion is kind of a misnomer in the English. That's English the English kind of missed the Greek interpretation. That the word mansion should have been prepared rooms. Yes. Room. Dwelling place. Yes. There are many dwellings. Yes. In my father's house, there are many dwellings. Yes. In my father's house, there are many rooms. Hallelujah. Yes. One house, but there's many rooms. Yes. One body, but there's many members. Yes. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yes. We are the house of God. So God was trying to change that toxic tradition. He let him shut the building down so that the church would rise up. Yeah. Right. This morning you got up, took your shower, washed your face, put your clothes on, and you said, I'm on my way to church. That was wrong. That's right. You weren't on your way to church. You got up and you, were, you became the church on the way. Come on, come on. Watch this. I'm coming to assemble myself with other churches. Yeah. Excuse me. Not other churches. Other rooms. And when we all get together, we're going to have Father's house. Because in Father's house, there are many, come on, there are many rooms. Hallelujah. What God is trying to tell us this morning, hallelujah, that we got to get rid of that toxic tradition. Glory to God. Let's give me. Now, we all don't want to have a good a good facility. Hallelujah. We, we discuss, listen to me, we discuss in the board meeting the facility. Hallelujah. Because we got to facilitate what God is doing. Hallelujah. So God is not against us having bigger facilities. God is not, he's not against us being able to house. I mean the people that comes together, hallelujah. But make no mistake about it, hallelujah. We ain't building the church. We building a we building a facility. God is building his church. 
Jesus said, upon this rock I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. He wasn't talking about boards and bricks. Hallelujah. He was talking about folk. Ooh, I wish I had a church in here this morning. Somebody see it. Yeah. That's a good jumping off for. I'm going to put it right there. Hallelujah. Come on, we got to get rid of that toxic tradition. Hallelujah. The church has never been a building. Hallelujah. It's always been the people. Glory to God. Why is this tradition so toxic? Hallelujah. Because so many people think, glory to God, that hallelujah, if they got to get the building paid off, we got to get enough money to pay the light bill. Why? So we can have church. The devil is alive. Hallelujah. We have a church while we paying the building. We have a church while we paying the light bill. We have a church amen, in the midst, glory to God. Because when God's people get together, that's when we have church. Hallelujah. So when God's people get together, that's why it's so important. Listen to me, ladies. That's why it's so important. Hallelujah. That we be a part of the right fellowship. Listen to me. This is called New Beginnings. Fellowship. Hallelujah. We're part of a fellowship. Glory to God. Under God. Hallelujah. We are many members, but we ain't but one body. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is many members, but it's only one body. Because in my Father's house, there are many mansions. There are many dwelling places. Come on, y'all. There are many rooms. Hallelujah. Come on, get behind and help me push. Hallelujah. There are many rooms in the house of God. And all you got to do is come on. Hallelujah. Because once we get a hold of this thing, we can go in the street and have church. We can have church under the oak tree. We can have church in the backyard. We can have church in the living room. We can have church in the kitchen. We can have church in the dining room. We can have church at your house. We can have church at your house. We can come to your house and have church. We can have church in your backyard. Wherever we'll assemble our church. Wherever we'll assemble our church. That's church. That's church. Somebody see yes. Yeah. Let me give you a reference, and I'm going to close. In the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 6, verse number 19, Paul said, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of God? Come on, say, My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Come on, say, My body is God's dwelling place. Come on, say, My body gives God a local address. He lives in me. He walks with me. He talks with me. Tells me I'm his own. And the joy we share while we tell it there. Somebody see it. That's all I'm trying to say. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say. Whatever you want, whenever you go to your work tomorrow, Go to your child tomorrow. You're a church on the way. When you go to the grocery store, you're a church on the way. When you go at the Walmart, you're a church on the way. When you're picking up those peas, the church just picked up some peas. Somebody say yes. It's not about boats and bricks. It's not about box and stone. It's about the mindset of understanding that God lives right here. My body. Paul said, I'm the temple of God. He said, I'm the temple. Glory to God. We got to lose that toxic tradition. Hallelujah. It's not about buildings and architecture. Oh, hallelujah. Because if you make it about buildings, you're going to make buildings more important than people. Come on. Y'all seen it? I ain't got to tell you. In some places, they build it as more important than the folks. I'm going to say it again. If you don't get this, you're going to be using people to build buildings. You're going to use people to build your church. You're going to have people getting in debt up to their eyeballs. Talk to me. You have people, hallelujah, doing what they can't even afford to do. Because Pastor told us, he told me to bring my light bill money. He told me, hallelujah, me and my baby need something to eat. But the church got to have it. Oh, oh Lord, I got to talk about it. I got to talk about it. You can't even pay your bills. 
Cause you got some six foot shots to stand behind a pulpit telling you to bring him your money. The devil is alive. Come on, somebody. Brother Stephen, somebody came to me and said, Pastor, I can't pay my life bill. But I, I want to pay my tithe. I said, honey, go pay your life bill. That's what I do. Pay your life bill. God ain't a thief. He don't want you sitting in the dark. If your life is all, let it be your choice. Don't let it be because you had to bring your life bill money to church. Talk to me, somebody. I'll go in my pocket and pay this bill myself before I put it in my people in bond. I've got no come over you. Know? I'll do it myself before I put anybody I ain't gonna, I'm not going to lie and I ain't going to let nobody come in here and put you in captivity I promise to God hallelujah if I invite a guest minister in him and if he starts spewing that garbage over this pulpit I will stop him mid sentence yes I will yes I will I said not in here not in here you ain't bringing my people under that bondage I'm telling you, that old pastor, ain't that old pastor? Yeah. We're going to have to deal with this stuff. Yeah. That's a toxic tradition. Yeah. You got folks, you got folks, you got churches, you got two and three folks in them. And, it, and instead of them going and assembling themselves with other folks, they're trying to pump air, they're trying to artificially, hallelujah, come on. Yeah. They, they, they're trying to perform CPR on something that should have died a long time ago. Some of these places need a DNR. Y'all don't want to talk to me. <laughs> God help us, Jesus. You take a mannequin and put oxygen on him, you can pump all the air you want into a man. He ain't going to live. Why? Because he ain't in him. You see how pretty that plant is? That's pretty. It don't require a drop of water. You know why? Because it ain't real. It won't wither. You know why? Because it ain't real. Now you may have to come knock some dust off of it in the night. But you ain't got to put no water on it. Because it ain't real. Pastor, why are you talking about plants? I said all that to say this. Some places ain't real. Some places, come on, they got a form. The Bible, the Bible, I'm, I'm in the Bible. I'm in the Bible. The Bible says that these last days would be marked by people that have a form that look just like a Boston fern. Come on, somebody. It looked just like a real fern, don't it? But look at him. It ain't real. I touch it. It don't even feel it. It looked real off from a distance. I said off from a distance. I said off from a distance. It looked real. I got the clothes. It's got a good show going. But I dare you to get closer. I dare you to get close to it. I said, I dare you to get close. And if I can put my hand on it, that ain't real. It looked good. <laughs> Smell like plastic. Hallelujah. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't got no fragrance to it. Come on. Come on, say, some stuff don't even smell right. Mm. What is this I smell? What is this I smell? Hallelujah. You don't want to go in some churches and just go, what is this I smell? Hallelujah. Don't even smell. Don't even smell real. Just got that old plastic manufactured. Hallelujah. Don't even smell real. Oh, when you're coming to church of God, when you assemble yourself around the church of God, there's a fragrance in the house. God, I'm trying to quit, but I don't want to. When you come together in the house of God, I ain't talking about boards and bricks. I'm talking about assembling ourselves with brothers and sisters. There is a fragrance of his presence. I said there is a fragrance of his presence. When God is in the building, the sin sick are healed. When God is in the building, souls are saved. When God is in the building, minds are regulated. When God is in the building, the feet will walk in straight. When God is in the building, yeah. I had to throw that in there. Oh, somebody shot hallelujah. I got to quit for real. I don't want to. Mm. There's a 
a fragrance in here. Ooh, I can't tell you. I can't tell you number of times. When I sat behind this keyboard and a fragrance come across my room, I said, he's in here. What is this I smell? He's in here. Oh, I got running in my feet. I got waving in my hand. I got a shot in my belly. I had somebody with me. Yeah. He died for his people. Yeah. 
Yes, Green, yellow, black, and white. Yes, They're all precious in his sight. That's right. And you wait till I get to this part. I'm going to get to a part that says many times what has been masquerading as American patriotism ain't nothing but disguised racism. All right, now. And I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it just to show if God puts strength in his body. i got to talk about it. Because yes, you got some of these churches are just as racist yes, on both sides. Both sides. Yes, sir. And I'm going to talk about it. We got to lose. We got to forget the skin tone. Yes, There's one thing we all got in common. That's sin. Yes, and we all need Jesus Christ. Yes, Let's give our Facebook audience a hand. God bless you.